Good morning, folks. We've got a peek at the hurricane. Space weather has intensified. The earthquakes rumbled to life, and we've got all the top science news coming up. But let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com, where we find the last 24 hours on our star work calm once again. The appearance of an active region on the left hasn't budged the X-ray solar flares, and we've still got to focus on the coronal holes. The solar wind maintained its calming in the kinetic telemetry, but the magnetism of the stream got wildly variable towards the afternoon and a brief geomagnetic storm cropped up, settling back down quickly. We do, of course, have another stream on the way from that coronal hole, but as you heard yesterday, the earthquake watch would peak in the interim. It began almost right away with a six-pointer in Indonesia. We saw a 6.8 come afterwards near Kamchatka, drop to 6.3 and then back up to 6.5, and the big one yesterday hit Papua New Guinea. As many of you quickly noticed, this was one of the most accurate blood echo alert zones with the rumble hitting the inner 20% circle. The alert popped up when the blood echoes began approximately 19 hours before the big quake. The OLR chart beneath it at quakewatch.net showed a small delta class anomaly over the eastern island chains of the nation as well. We will update the stats at quakewatch.net later today. Let's go now to Hurricane Michael. There is already confirmed loss of life as the storm charged the panhandle and is moving up into the states this morning. Here is some more of that lightning rotation in the eye wall. The energy was clearly seen diminishing the moment it hit land. However, with the eye no longer over the water, we saw the structure melt in the center and the ring of lightning die out as the rain and flood concerns kick in on shore. So hopefully we remember this, a supermassive black hole animation where they are on the verge of colliding. Problem is that it is completely modeled. They've never seen any such thing in the cosmos, and they decided they just weren't going to model the central region between them, possibly the most important point, and it would break their physics to do so. Well, in that same silly vein, we've got a neutron star simulation, once again based on modeling, and tracking macro particle tracks where each moving ball represents trillions of particles, electrons, positrons, etc. Now, there is no question as to the aesthetic beauty of the animation. The field and charged particle output makes a lot of sense, but alas, I have the strongest words in this field against using macro particles to model complex space plasma physics, and they should probably go at least two years without publishing a neutron star mystery article before having the cojones to declare the veracity of one of their computer models. We've also got linked for you a good piece on what rocky planets might look like inside. Pretty cool to see the options and consider what it means for habitability and also for the moons of Jupiter and Saturn. So if you've heard about the odd heavy elements near the galactic center, turns out that it was indeed a spectroscopic mistake. While explaining how easy it is for the central galactic powerhouse to electromagnetically fool such a detector, they did forget to mention that this issue is ripe to occur anywhere we look out beyond our own galaxy. We do a bit of that. Lastly, folks, I also mentioned it was nice to see the electrons and positrons, but I did not expect something like this in paper form for many years. What if electrons and positrons don't annihilate? What if they neutralize electromagnetically and don't just disappear from existence? They just have a nearly absent interaction profile outside of a tiny attractive force. Well, that would make them account for dark matter. And this professor says he wouldn't rule that out. And by the way, he's saying it is real matter just covert. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. US and the UK actually have the top alerts tonight. Be sure to note where the big storms are heading. We greatly appreciate your support and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.